Durant gairebé mig segle, París va ser dona, una dona intel·ligent, creativa, fascinant. Diu Andrea Weiss, autora de París era mujer, retratos de la orilla izquierda del Sena. El nou llibre, editat per Egales, és la traducció al castellà de l'obra París was a woman que va ser una investigació de l'autora i la seva sòcia Greta Schiller que van portar a terme sobre les dones que van teixir una xarxa cultural i creativa al París d'entre guerres. L'autora ha guanyat un premi Emmy pel seu documental Before Stonewall. Va ser guionista del film dirigit per Greta Schiller, una pel·lícula estrenada el 1996 que van poder veure a Barcelona gràcies al descobriment de la mostra de films de dones de Barcelona i que es va convertir en un llibre. Dues referències imprescindibles per a la visibilitat, la genealogia i la història de les lesbianes. París era el centre de la creació, però la història ha recollit les influències i vida d'alguns homes, com Picasso, Joyce, Hemingway, en aquells moments històrics, però no la de les dones com Juna Barnes, Natalie Barney, Sylvia Beach, Adrienne Monnier, Gertrude Stein, Alice B. Toclas, Romain Brooks, Colette, Janet Flanner, entre d'altres. Crec que algunes d'aquestes dones eren escrites en les històries de les històries de les històries pieces here and there, but there wasn't a, a history of that story. There were, everyone pretty much has heard of Gertrude Stein, Americans at least have heard of Gertrude Stein, um, but, uh, and maybe one or two others, but by, by doing the research on the less known women, um, I was able to uncover a real community. And I think it's a difference to have a community than to have just individual women who are part of the men's story, like Gertrude Stein is part of Picasso's story because she discovered him early on, discovered his paintings. But to put her in a community of women who came from all over and lived in Paris, uh, when you under start to understand the community, you see that they really changed the landscape of what we understand as Paris in the 20s or Paris between the wars because, first of all, they created the structures the salons, the bookstores. They created the, the place where artists from all over the world met each other. And also they supported each other because a lot of them could not have been artists or writers without each other. They supported each other financially, emotionally, and other ways. Paris was a woman ens descobreix dones impressionants de nivells culturals i econòmics diferents i que majoritàriament opten per la bisexualitat o el lesbianisme en les seves relacions. Dones que han estat amagades per la història oficial d'aquell París dels anys 20. I don't know if I agree completely that it remained <clears throat> excuse me, that it remained hidden because I think in the 20 years since I've written the book in English, I wrote it 20 years ago in England and the United States, I think um, these women have become kind of iconic in certain ways and this community has become iconic, um, which certainly was not the case when I wrote the book and did the research. So I can't say it's because of my book, but little by little, I think with the internet and also um, a lot of academic scholarship has been done on each of the women. Biographies have since come out on each of them. So I don't know if it remains hidden, but let's say it it, they're very well known in a very small circle, <laughs> you know, and in the mainstream, in the mainstream society, still pretty much unknown. Aquest retrat de la comunitat, o companyia d'Amazones, com escrivia Catherine Ann Porter al Harper's Magazine, d'escriptores, fotògrafes, actrius, pintores, llibreteres, editores, en un París obert van experimentar amb la cultura i es van donar suport per a la creació, de forma molt diferent a les aventures que ens han arribat. París was a woman ens obre un nou imaginari i descobreix una genealogia femenina impressionant, que ens va arribar el 1996 amb la pel·lícula, després amb el llibre i ara amb la traducció al castellà que ens ofereix l'editorial Egales. Partly they're not better known because they're women and partly they're not better known because they're lesbians and partly they're well known they're not well known because they never promoted themselves the way the men did like they did not um you know there were men in that circle like hemingway who were really determined to become famous that was their goal they were going to become famous and james joyce wanted to be the greatest writer of the 20th century 
and Hemingway wanted to be, you know, known as a really um, great American author. And the women never had those ambitions and they never promoted themselves in that way. And unfortunately, because of that, they're a little bit lost to history. Um, one of the things that works in their favor, one of the reasons we can find out anything about them is the women who lived long enough told the stories of the others. So, you know, for example, Giselle Freund, whom we interviewed for our film, Paris Was a Woman, she was sent to take photographs of James Joyce in Paris. She was a photographer. She was sent to take, a, do a big photo spread on James Joyce. And she insisted that Sylvia Beach and Adria Monnier be in those photographs. Even though they, it was on James Joyce, no one asked that they be in the photo, but she said, if, if you're not in the photo, no one will remember you. And so some of the women documented other women. And that's how we know what we do know, but it's, it's not enough.